We give you praise, Lord. We honor you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness, for your love kindness. We give you praise, Lord. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will have mercy on us. Lord, I pray for every single person under the sign, under the listening to this message right now. I ask, Lord, that in your mercy, you will visit us and you will reveal yourself unto us. That our worship of you is not going to be based on another man's experience. Lord, we want to thank you for those who have had an encounter with you. We thank you for all our spiritual leaders. We thank you for those examples that we have and they were written in the scriptures for us. Lord, we want to thank you for what you did in their life. But Lord, we ask you today that we want to have our own experience. We desire to know you. We desire to know your spirit. We desire to experience the power of your spirit. So Holy Spirit, first and foremost, I want to apologize on behalf of myself and on behalf of the church that we have not given you your place, that we have not seek to know you. We are sorry, Lord, the Holy Spirit. And I want to thank you for putting it upon my heart to increase or to create an awareness of the Holy Spirit of you and what you were meant to do in our life, what you have done and what you will do. So Holy Spirit, I ask today that as we go over the scriptures that you have put upon my heart, that you will reveal to us what you can do. And I ask, Lord, the Holy Spirit, that during the course of this word, this message, that you will manifest yourself in different ways. The scripture says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it says something from the Holy Spirit can be seen in everyone. Lord, the Holy Spirit, I ask you, as we turn in repentance to you today, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, when a person turns unto the Lord, the veil will be removed. Lord, I pray that as we turn to you today, that the veil, the skill, what is preventing us to see what you can do, what is preventing us to see in the realm of the spiritual, that skill is removed. As we read the word of God today, we will get revelation. Lord, I want to thank you because you will manifest your healing power on this video and the audio as someone listening to your word. They will experience the healing anointing. Thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you because you will open our eyes to see visions. That's what Prophet Joel said. Say, and God said in the last day he will pour out the spirit upon all flesh. And he said, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Lord, Holy Spirit, I pray for every single person here in this world. All of them that are parents, we pray, O oh God, that our sons and our daughters, they will prophesy. Our young men shall see vision. Lord, you will cause somebody to see vision today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you. Because he will give somebody an idea that will save their family. An idea that will save the organization. And an idea that will save the nation. Holy Spirit, I thank you because what we know is not going to be based on what we read on in, or what we heard on the news. Lord, thank you. Because you begin to reveal things to us right now before they happen. Holy Spirit, I thank you because you will show us things to come. Lord Jesus said, when you, the Holy Spirit, when you come and you have come, you are in us. He says that you are the comforter. Lord, I pray for every single person that is hurting right now. 
that had a fight last night that they, something was done to them and they were gutted as a result of what was done to them. And they need comfort. Someone whose their loved one has been taken away. Someone who have lost business, lost property, and they are in sorrow right now. Lord, I want to thank you because you will exchange the garment of heaviness you will give in that place, the garment of praise in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are the comforter. You do it so well in such a way that no one can do it. You know the walls that we suit so. Lord, Holy Spirit, I ask you right now that you will comfort someone. Somebody is struggling to pray. Lord, your word says, Jesus said you are the intercessor. You will help us to pray. I ask, Lord, that someone is lost for, of words. They are short of words right now. They don't even know what to say. They don't even know what to say to the situation. They don't even know what to do again. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you give them words. You will give them words. Words from the Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the words that I speak to you, they are from the Spirit and they are alive. Give that woman a word that she will say to her son that will make the son Emmanuel. Yes, that is your name. Lord, give that woman a word that she will say to Emmanuel that will make him to have a change of heart. Yes. And I speak to you, Emmanuel, today. Hear the voice of the Lord. You are an instrument of God. You are created to serve God. And I call you by your name today. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will hear my voice wherever you are. You will hear it. Not my voice, but you will hear the voice of the Lord in my voice. And you will come back home. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, I want to thank you. Because you will give somebody the word of wisdom. Oh, yes, Lord, thank you. Because you said in your word, Lord Jesus, that there is nothing hidden that shall not be exposed. Somebody uh, is already living a kind of life, trusting someone, not knowing that they have been lying to them. So, Lord, I ask that you will manifest to a lady, a young lady, that is about to say yes to a proposal, not knowing that it was a deception. You will give that young lady a word of knowledge now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. And their eyes will be open. Lord, the Holy Spirit, I trust you. Because the word of the Lord says, And you carried Ezekiel into a valley that is full of dry bones. Your words, the scripture says, That on the last day I was in the spirit. I was wrapped up in a spirit. And the Lord opened my eyes to see. Lord, I thank you that during the course of this message, you will open my eyes to see what is happening in people's life. You will open my eyes, Lord, to see dry bones, people that have lost courage, people that have given up. And Lord, you will put your word in my mouth and I will prophesy just like Ezekiel prophesied. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for this dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I want to thank you because dry bones shall live. And I declare right now, someone that have been treated unjustly, yes, yes, by the senior pastor. Yes, you thought that he was in the spirit, but he wasn't in the spirit, he was in the flesh. And you are crying to God and say, Lord, will you avenge for my case? Hear the word of the Lord, that injustice will be reversed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you for showing me that. Thank you, Lord, that people will not just receive this message, but as they do, Lord, they will see things. You will open their eyes, Lord, to see, Lord. I thank you because it will be said of someone that something from the Spirit can be seen in them. I give you praise, Lord, for it. 
In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. I want to thank those of you uh, that are watching this video. I want you to please do me a favor. Help me to share this video. Not because I want to um <laughs> I want to make more money. You know, I thank the Lord. Uh I'm not doing this work for profit. Um <laughs> there's something that Moses said in Exodus chapter 33. You know, I just pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see what others cannot see. So the title of this message is The Power to See what others cannot see. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will open your eyes to see. Uh, we have been looking at the subject of the Holy Spirit and uh, we started by saying, come Holy Spirit and help. And we know that he has come, he's on planet earth. And we have been looking at what the Holy Spirit can do. The Lord, I said to you that God gave me an assignment and that assignment is two or threefold. And uh, the first part of that assignment is to create an awareness of the personality of the Holy Spirit. Because we don't really know who the Holy Spirit is. And I want to thank God for all the mega churches that we have. For I threw a challenge to you today, sir. Ama, our dear pastors, we need to reflect. I hear something that Reverend Sam Adeyemi said in just a one-minute clip of video. And he said something, especially to the churches in Nigeria. He said that now we are preaching prosperity gospel that was meant to take the people out of poverty for over 20 years. He said, but yet the people have become poorer. So that means it's time for us to change focus. It's time for us to begin to evaluate what is all this singing and dancing like uh, the people from where I am right now, they will say, say all these, you know, <laughs> they want to just say yeah, all these singing and dancing things. What is it all about? We need to get to that point when we need to thoroughly evaluate the key thing, what is important. So God gave me an assignment to create an awareness of the personality of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is not just speaking in tongues. Joseph did not speak in tongues, okay? Daniel did not speak in tongues, but it came to a point in his life that they had to look for him because they knew he had the Holy Spirit. So God asked me, the Lord asked me, he said, create an awareness of the personality of the Holy Spirit. So we look at who the Holy Spirit is in, in the month of, we are now in the month of uh, October. 2024, in the month of September, all the videos are on YouTube, so you can go and watch them and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, we create an awareness of the past of who the Holy Spirit is. We said the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. We said the Holy Spirit is that person that is a person, and that you cannot come to Jesus without the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot worship God the way you are supposed to worship him without the Holy Spirit. We said the Holy Spirit is so important. We said the Holy Spirit is the glory of God. If you want to think about what happened when the children of Israel, how they were able to know their way through the wilderness, we were told that they were led by the pillar of cloud in the day and they were led by the pillar of fire in the night. To me, it didn't say the Holy Spirit. But I believe that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the fire. He can manifest himself in form of a fire. And I think that's where the problem is. The Holy Spirit <laughs> is not the dove. Okay? It's not, or it's not in all the instances that when the Holy Spirit descended of people, that he came as a dove. So we, we can't say just because the symbol of a particular denomination is a dove or they put it there. Come Holy Spirit, we say it and it go like this. Okay, he can manifest himself that way when Saul prophesied. You know, I'll try as much as possible to, to expose us to the scripture because what happened is that we take a portion of the scripture and then we establish a doctrine on that and then we, exp we expect everybody to follow it through. So for example, the doctrine of laying out of hands. Uh, it was one of the doctrines of the apostles uh, 
But we saw in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, you can literally count uh, how many people he laid hands on. So if the only way through wage and you must maintain contact and the only way through which somebody can be made whole is through the laying off of hands, uh, then <laughs> it means the woman with the issue of blood wouldn't have been healed because she touched. It means you also can touch. You may not be able to touch our Lord Jesus Christ physically right now, but you can touch by faith. It's amazing. Even with the doctrine of laying out of hands, uh, Peter saw the man by the beautiful gate. He just said to him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. You know, um, maybe I need to read that scripture very well to see actually whether he laid his two hands and begin to pray and begin to shabbat. You know, just a war from the spirit can give life. So the Lord said, create an awareness of the personality of the Holy Spirit. Okay? He, he can manifest himself in fire. He can manifest himself as the gentle spirit, as wind, you know, in different manifestations. But the Holy Spirit is a person. Some people might not like to hear this. Is the third person of the Trinity. Okay? People say because the word Trinity is not in the Bible, they don't believe in they don't believe in Trinity. God bless your darling heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so the second part of my assignment is to create an awareness of what the Holy Spirit can do. And the third part of that assignment is to let everyone know that the Holy Spirit can manifest himself through them. That means you also can prophesy. So the Holy Spirit is so important. Our uh, Lord Jesus Christ told the disciples, he said, look, go and preach the good news. But then he told them, he gave them a warning, he said, don't go. He said, don't go <laughs> um, until you are in due or you, until you are clothed. Until you are submerged in the power from above. The power, the Holy Spirit is the power from above. And uh, thank God for Dr. Luke for recording that in Luke chapter 24. And also in Acts of Apostles chapter 1. Can we put that on the screen for us to see Acts of Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. And the disciple, when Jesus Christ was about to go, the disciple were having a conversation with him. And uh, in that conversation, they were asking him about the temple, which is what we do today. We look at the manifestation of the power of God on the size of the temple, the cathedral and everything. And about establishing government on earth, what happened on earth. And Jesus said, look, uh, don't worry about when the kingdom of God is going to be established on earth. But the most important thing right now, is that you will receive power. If we can have the amplified translation, thank you. It says you will receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And when you look at the word power there, the word power there is translated as um, ability, efficiency, and might. Everyone, let's say it together. You will receive power, which means ability efficiency, and mind. Let's say it one more time. Say, I will receive ability from the Holy Spirit. Say, say, I will receive, I will become better. I will become more efficient through the power of the Holy Spirit. And say it one more time. Say, I will receive might. Say, I will be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we said everything that God is going to do in your life is according to his power that is at work within you. It's amazing today where um, we have turned everything into prayer. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I saw a video and the man of God was like, Oh, I speak to you, Naira. It's a currency of Nigeria. Uh, dollar, dollar will become, uh, what's it called? Is it? 
uh, one dollar will be trading for 500 naira. And uh, people sat in the church and they were saying amen. And I'm like, seriously? Okay? That's the kind of craft that we fall for. And people were saying amen. As if they spend dollars in heaven. Rather than for the man of God to pray to people, you will receive an idea and wisdom. Or pray for the government. Pray for the governor of Central Bank. Pray for the minister of finance, minister of trade, that the Lord will give them an idea. And we give them the wisdom to be able to strengthen the value of Naira. That's the correct prayer. Okay? So, <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3 says, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above that which you can ever think of or imagine. How will God do it? Can anybody tell me? Everything you need in this life, everything you ever think of, how do you think God is going to do it? He's going to do it how? According to what? According to his power. According to the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work within you. So if you want to pray right, what do you do? You look to the Holy Spirit. If you want to speak words that is effective, you look to the Holy Spirit. If you want to know what is going to happen next, don't just look to the news. Thank God for BBC Radio 4. I love it. <laughs> okay? And thank God for BBC, the radio channel. Thank you for the weather report. If you want to know what is going to happen, look to the Holy Spirit. You know, one of the things I find out, thank you, you can take the scripture down. One of the things I find out about these things about the person of the Holy Spirit is that most of the time it's just about us depending on him. Uh, it's just about us making him to know that Holy Spirit, I am, I am depending on you. Most times it's not prayer. Most times it's not giving. I'm not saying prayer is wrong. I'm not saying giving is wrong. I'm just sharing you my own personal story. It's just about having conversation with the Holy Spirit. So, for example, Romans chapter 8 says that if the Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from dead, if that same Spirit dwells on the inside of you, he said that same Spirit will quicken your mortal body. You know, one translation of the Bible says it will restore or make alive. Whatever is wrong with your body. So most time, number one is believing that scripture, knowing that the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from dead, that same spirit can raise you up. Then the second thing is for you to begin to have conversation with that Holy Spirit that is on you and say, Holy Spirit, I trust you <laughs> to repair one out cell in my kidney. Are you with me? The Holy Spirit. Having a conversation when you realize that is a person and say, Holy Spirit, Jesus said, you are the advocate. I need you to talk to my husband. I, I, I need you to talk to my son right now, Holy Spirit. I need you to talk to my boss. I need you to talk to someone on my behalf. You know, an advocate is somebody that speaks on your behalf. So most of the time, because I find out that, how many of you have found out that you just wish something in your heart and it just comes to pass. Anyone have experienced that? So, for example, sometimes you, you just wish, you know, how, how I wish I can get an ice cream right now. And uh, has any, anything like that happened to anyone? And you wish something happened and somebody is just going to bring that same thing to you. And you just be like, oh my God, I was thinking about that. You know, I was craving for that. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's because the Spirit of God has put it in their heart to come and do that same thing for you. Um, that was what he said. Paul was writing to a particular church. He said, I believe, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. He said, it was God who put it in his heart to care for you, to help you. When God put it in the heart of people to help you, 
to care for you. Even when you want to give up, those people will not give up. They won't give up on you because it was God who put it in their heart to help you. So most times, we should be talking to the Holy Spirit to go and advocate on our behalf, to go and help us to speak to someone. You know, after you have finished speaking to someone and there is no change, you know, actually you get wisdom. <laughs> Before you speak to them, say, Holy Spirit, please, can you please go and talk to this person? I, I, I mean, it's only the Holy Spirit that we wake up somebody by the middle of night, something that somebody has done a long time ago. I'm talking about, um, is, it, is his name Mordecai, Mordecai now, right now? He saved the king. They were supposed to kill the king, and uh, he did it, and all that was done was just to record it down. It was recorded down. Nothing was done. The guy was not rewarded, nothing. Is the only the Holy Spirit that can wake up somebody that is going to reward you to become restless until they do that which <laughs> is in their heart. I, I mean, it's only the Holy Spirit that will make a prophet to go to the house of a man called Jay-Z. And then the, they were looking for somebody to anoint. And the man said, look, uh, look, look, whatever you guys want to do, you can do. He said, we will not sit down until you go and bring this particular person. It's only the Holy Spirit. I, I know when you read those things, uh, you won't necessarily find the Holy Spirit there. And I think that's our problem. Our problem is that we will do concordance reading now. Is it, uh, yes, search function when we read the Bible. You're just searching for everywhere the Holy Spirit appears. Uh, so <laughs> when some pastors are preaching, you can tell the next scripture they will go to if you've been reading the Bible very well. You see that they've just searched the Holy Spirit appear here. We can't see the Holy Spirit in different places in the life of people in the scripture. You know, we cannot see the Holy Spirit where it wasn't written expressly in English language. That does the Holy Spirit as at work. But when you read the other portion of the of the scripture, you realize that it's only the Holy Spirit that can do this. So, for example, Mary asked the angel, "How shall this thing be, seeing that I knew not a man?" Uh, the the angel of the Lord asked, uh, told her. He said, "What did he say? He said, the power of the Almighty. He said, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. That's the first thing he said." And he said, the power of the Almighty will overshadow you. That means something happens to you or something will happen to you every time the Holy Spirit comes up on the inside of you to manifest himself. So, Prophet Samuel told Saul, he said in the book of, I believe, 1 Samuel. Now, he told him, he said, the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you and you shall be turned into another person. So we know that the Holy Spirit is that person who can talk on you into another person. You want to become a better person, what do you do, sir? What do you do, ma? You turn to the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you want to prophesy. You can prophesy. I once told somebody, I said, everyone can prophesy. And the person said, no, no, no. This is a special ability to some people. I said, no. There's a difference between the ability to prophesy and the office of a prophet, a prophet, that's where the confusion is. Uh, but I'm not teaching on that today. So, in the few minutes that I have left, uh, last week, we look at the power to become more efficient. And that's how we look at, we said the power of the Holy Spirit will help you to become more efficient. Will help you to be able to utilize the resources that you have. Uh, 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 in, in, in a layman's term, we, to become more efficient means um, to accomplish whatever you want to do with the resources that you have. It's a place where whether you have enough or you don't have enough, you are still able to accomplish the goal. There's a particular word that the Holy Spirit gave me that, you know, that word is going is, is gonna, is gonna to come back. So. When we are talking about you being efficient, it means that, like Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, he said, you are able to survive. You are able to go through every situation and circumstances of life. And today, we want to look at the power to see what others cannot see. Is a promise in the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 
Can we quickly go there? Verses 9 to 12. It says, But as it is written, Are you there? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But as it is written, Eyes has not seen, ears have not heard, neither have he entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Thank God for the company that your parents establish. For there is something that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. What has never entered into the heart of men. He said there are things that God has reserved for you. There are potentials that God, I mean, there are ideas, there are things, there is a song that is going to save life. Uh, there, are, there, there are things in the realms of the spirit that God wants to accomplish in your life. And the Bible says that the person that we reveal, look at the next verse. It said, it said, um, but God, and you see the next verse. It said, but God has what? Let's read it together. It said, but God has revealed them unto us by the Holy Spirit. Question I have this morning is, what has the Holy Spirit revealed unto you? The Holy Spirit is that person that can give you the power to say what others cannot see. Um, I'm, I'm in, I am an information management expert, and uh, there is something about data. It causes you can plot the data in such a way that you can see a pattern. Uh, for example, we are now in the month of September, October. Based on the trend in the past, you can say that this is a time that the number of hospital admission increases. And you can tell that you can see that in the data. So as a manager in the office, you are not just supposed to manage the resources. You are supposed to look at your data. So if you are hosting an event, you should have an idea in terms of the fact that um, when we did this event at this particular period of time, quite a lot of people are not going to come because they're going to go on holiday. So there's no point you planning something. Uh, we are going to start our annual prayer and fasting, uh, which we do every year, uh, just to wait on the Lord. And we're going to be praying for the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we do ours in the month of November. Because we know that the spirit of buying and selling is always in the atmosphere in December. There's a lot of distraction. So people, the purpose of the prayer and fasting is not just to pray. It's not one way, but to receive. We want to give the people the opportunity to be able to receive from God. So information is very important. The ability to say things is important. When you see a particular pattern in the life of people, maybe you see a pattern. In the life of your parents, maybe you trace it down three generations. They are, are polygam polygamous in nature. That means the same thing is likely to happen to you if you don't do something differently. There was one time I was walking uh, in the riverine area and I went to a particular community, a village. And uh, because I didn't know something about patterns, I didn't know that um, the tide always come back. So I had planned, uh, we got to the place, I had planned that I was going to return back to the office. We went on a boat. I was going to return back to the office around, I think, 1 o'clock. I fixed a meeting or something like that. So we got to the village. We have to get there as early as possible. I think we got there around 8 o'clock or thereabout. So the waters we flow, you know, to the, to the banks, to the side, very close to the village, to the point that you can just alight, you know, from the boat. But then what happens that um, by the time it gets to 9 a.m., 10 a.m., or 11 a.m., the waters will recede. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't know that because I wasn't living in that. That was my first time experience. So some of us don't know that some things do come back. That's why the scripture says that there is no new thing under the heaven. Are you, are you following me? If you observe carefully, 
you know that as the scripture says that <laughs> what has been is what will be. I think there is a scripture like that. <laughs> he said what has been is what will be. In other words, history will repeat itself. Have you seen a child who say, oh, I am never going to be like my mother. Oh, I'm never going to tolerate what my mother tolerated with my father. Guess what? They end up marrying somebody where they will get the same treatment. So uh, you saying that I'm not just going to be like this is not enough. You need to understand what happened in that particular context and why you need to do things differently. So it's important for us to understand that we see things that other people cannot see. So I want us to say, I want to say this, that the one thing that the Holy Spirit revealed to me is this. As I was thinking about this title or this topic, the power to see what others cannot see. So the Lord revealed to me that in life, there are two things that determine what you will become, what you will get out of this life, and the impact that you will make. And I want you to write it down. There are two important things that determine who you are in this life. Two important things that determine how you conduct your life. It affects every area of your life. Everyone, the way they are. If you see somebody who is passionate, these two things affect what they do passionately. If you see someone who procrastinates, these two things affect them. If you see someone who is agile, these two things affect them. If you see someone who is slow, these two things affect them. And those two things are the what those two things are what you see and what you hear. Here, E A R. Oh no, sorry. Here, H E A R. What you see and what you hear. What you see and what you hear determines your belief. Your belief affects your attitude. And your attitude determines how far you can go in life. So, as a woman, when you stay under, the, under, under a man, no matter how wealthy, no matter how anointed that man is, and you stay under a person that consistently, or as a child, or you know, you are working in an organization under a manager, that all they say to you consistently is you cannot do that. And you hear that work consistently. After some time, you start believing it. You will lose all the potentials. You start, you start, you stop believing in yourself. You know, I once worked with someone, and the person said, I just wonder how you believe more in me than I believe in myself. It is not that the person doesn't believe in him or herself. It was just because of the words that they have heard. They have never heard anybody who says, hey, I see a potential in you. I mean, there's a part, there's a part in terms of someone saying something to you and then you letting it affect in you. But what I want to look at today is that the power of what you can say. And you will begin to turn to the Holy Spirit to show you what others cannot see. Let's see what Jesus said, and I will paint a picture, and then I will close. I, 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 I just pray that the Lord is going to open my, uh, is going to bring me back to this because I think this is really big. And I want to show you so many examples in the Scripture. So let's go to the book of John first and foremost, John chapter sixteen and verse thirteen. The power to see what others cannot see. John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you. Can you say that? The spirit will do what? Guide you into all the truth. And it says the whole and the full truth. The person that can show you. It would. I love what Apostle John said. He said, as the Spirit teaches you, say because he cannot lie. Uh, Holy Spirit that, is that one person that has lost 
the capacity to lie. He just can't. Uh, uh, the, the Holy Spirit is not the kind of a person that will say, yeah, that, that wasn't what I said. That wasn't what I said. That wasn't what I meant. Whatever Holy Spirit says is what he means because it's God's word. When you hear something from the Holy Spirit, I just want you to know that it will not return void. It will come to pass. You know, the word of prophecy that God gave Joel, he said, it shall come to pass. That in the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit. And that happened on the day of Pentecost. And it was confirmed, you know, um, by, by Peter. If you look at the prophecies concerning the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, you will see where it says, so that he might be fulfilled according to that which was prophesied. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. It will guide you into all truth. If you are looking to hear the truth, the person you turn to is who? The Holy Spirit. Let's keep reading. For he will not speak of his own message, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. Oh, so that means you have been praying to God. Oh Lord, I want to know your will. I want to know, no, no, I don't want to know your will. Okay, I show you a mystery today. Stop praying. Turn to the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to do what? To tell you. He's living on the inside of you. It's, it's about, because I want to help you, because somebody sent me a message. He said, but it is not all of us that can receive this thing. No, no. That's a wrong mentality. It's based on what you have been told and what you are. Everybody have the capacity to receive something from the Holy Spirit. You just have to talk to him. You know, the more you hear his voice, the more you recognize his voice. How do you start, Pastor? You start by reading the scripture and by asking questions. You see, when you ask the question and say, Holy Spirit, what does this mean? Okay, I want you to show me. So, when there was a confusion about Titan about two, three years ago, I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm not asking you now as a pastor to teach other people. I am asking you for me. Because there is a possibility of the fact that I was doing something without an understanding. And uh, when you do something without an understanding, you will not do it in faith and you will, may not get the result. And I went before the Lord. I said, I want to know this for myself. And the Holy Spirit began to teach me and he showed me a couple of scriptures and said, look, uh, look, a lot of people who taught about Titan even don't even know about Titan. But we are not talking about Titan today. Let's just leave that. I think I've done a teaching or something like that, a video on YouTube. You can go and search it and you can go and look at it. So, but if you need guidance, you turn to the Holy Spirit. The one I want us to look at is, he said, he will announce and declare to you things that are to come. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible, sir? The Holy Spirit will tell you things that will happen in the future. Anyone reading that? Is anyone reading that? The Holy Spirit will give you vision. The Holy Spirit will show you what will happen in the future. Let me tell you when a man begins to die. A man begins to die not the day the person died, as in died, dead, dead, dead. A man begins to die when you can no longer see what is going to happen. Uh, frustration sets in in life when you can't see what God is doing. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter nine, uh, Proverbs chapter twenty-nine, verse eighteen. Proverbs chapter twenty-nine, verse eighteen says something. Look at it. It says there that it says where there is no vision. Can we have the scripture on the screen, please? Read it in your Bible yourself. It says, where there is no vision, I'm reading the Amplified Translation. It says, where there is no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. One translation of the Bible, Message Bible Translation says, 
if people can see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Is it the reason we compete? The reason we compare ourselves with one another. The reason we say that, oh, this one is better than this person is because what? We cannot see what the Lord is doing. So the Holy Spirit is the one that will give you the capacity to see what others cannot see. Even when people come into our life, the reason we mismanage people, the reason we take people for granted, as a woman, as a, as a woman, as a man, we take people for granted in our life is because we cannot see what God is saying concerning that person. That's why Brother Paul said, I used to know man after the flesh. But he said, henceforth, I know no man. In other, word, in other words, I don't judge people based on the packaging. I don't look at someone and say whether they have the word of the Lord or not on the basis of their jacket, you know, on the basis of the packaging, on the basis of what they say. Everyone has an important thing to do in your life. And the Holy Spirit is the one that can help you to see a piece of land that people look at it and they say there is nothing there. You know, the Holy Spirit will help you to see what others cannot see. I said this during our Bible study. When Jesus was born, the people who were living around there, you know, around Bethlehem where he was born, he was outsider who came to tell them, even the Bible scholar, even though they have studied the scripture very well, they didn't know when Jesus was born. But there were some people who came from far east because they have studied, you know, uh, uh, the Bible, what's it called, this uh, 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 concordance or whatever it is, the Bible scholars say they are astrologers and they study the sign and they know that a particular star is going to appear at a particular point in time. And they, because they were studying, because they were expecting it, they saw the star. I, I don't know how far they travel, but the scripture says that they come, they came from the east and they followed the star. And they were the only one that was able to see the star. Because if Herod had the capacity to see the star, he would have known where Jesus was. And he probably wouldn't have killed all the children two years and below. Do you understand what I am saying? At your place of work, you need the power of the Holy Spirit to see what others cannot see. Even the children that God has given you, you need the power of the Holy Spirit to see something about those children so you can raise them up in the way of the Lord. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to see that even though there is going to be famine in the land, this is what we need to do. Let me tell you what will happen to you when you cannot see. Frustration. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 15. And this is where I'm going to park today. And I'm going to pray for you. That the Lord will help you. To listen to the Holy Spirit. Because he's trying to show you something. Someone under the sound of my voice. At the end of this message. You will dream dreams. Expect to dream dreams. I am not talking about dreams that you have been having about an accident, about masquerade pursuing you. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about a dream and a vision, something that will make you run. Are you with me? That's what I am talking about, something that will give you a new life, something that will put fire in your belly. Are you, are you following me? You go to work. Tomorrow, after the next day, after listening to this message, they see you as a supervisor, but you will see yourself as a CEO. It might not be CEO, the CEO of that organization, but you will see yourself 
in a different place on a new platform and then you just say look i need to get out of here there are some people i need to get out of my life because you cannot see what i am saying because you cannot see what i am saying you cannot follow me to where i am going your life will change you will become a new person because you have seen something that you have never seen before that's what that scripture says. Say, what eyes have not seen? You see, some of us, we have been pursuing things that have not been given to us. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it said, the Holy Spirit will show us what? Things that have been freely given unto us. Some of us have been paying for things that have been given to us. Things that God has instructed people to give to us. And you are supposed to ask for it and get it free of charge. And guess what you are doing? You are even willing to pay more. You are willing to labor. But at the end of this message, after listening to this message, I pray in the name of Jesus that something will happen to you. And suddenly you will realize, I can earn 100,000 pounds. Yes. It doesn't look like it. You will say to yourself, I also can earn one million. Oh, yes. I know right now that I am doing marketing strategy. I'm paying people to get more views. I have been writing content. I have been producing content. You know that I know is not right. But because I want to get more views to make more money. But you will see yourself. Not as someone who is posting content on Facebook or WhatsApp. To be able to make money, you will see yourself owning your own social media platform. You see, that was what Donald Trump tried to do when he was tweeting something and they blocked him. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have my own thing. You go and look at the politicians. Look at people, especially in Africa, because they know the mainstream media is not going to carry the news about them. They own media stations. The president of my country has a share in a media station. Are you following me? So, and they would tell them that I own this station. You carry the news that I want you to carry. Are you following me? The Lord will give you a vision to buy companies. The Lord will give you a vision to make an impact in your generation, in your nation, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that, that through the help of the Holy Spirit, Joseph, even though he didn't speak in tongues, bought the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. The Lord will give you an idea. The Holy Spirit will give you an idea that will help you to possess your possession. You wouldn't need to fight for your father's property. You won't even need to. You are dejected. You are demoralized because you look at the will that nothing was allocated to you. But as a result of this message, something will be steered up in your spirit and you will receive a vision. You will see something new and you will say, oh yeah, my father may not have left something to me because I didn't have a good relationship with him. I am going to be richer than him and you will receive a new vision. Quickly, let's look at this. My time is up, really up now. I got to round up. Genesis chapter 15, I have to read this scripture. Verse 1, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, I want you to read what that means because something happened before that. This was the same man that the Lord helped to defeat five kings. He went to war with 320 something servants and he defeated five kings to rescue. Lord. This was the same man that the Lord has blessed. This was the same man that came out of Egypt, went into Egypt, not a very rich person, but came out of Egypt with great substance. This was the same man that God has done so many things in his life. But look at what happened. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. You see, because I have dwelled on this scripture so much, after this message, thank you, Lord. And I received this for me by myself, Lord. 
I receive this word. Everybody lift up your hand. After this message, the word of the Lord will come to you in a vision. After this word, the word of the Lord will come to you in a vision. Thank you, Lord. After this message, the word of the Lord will come to you in a vision. And the Lord will show you what will happen in the next hundred years. What will happen to the generations that will come after you. The Lord will show you in a vision the events of things that will happen. The Lord will take you back 200 years. To events of things that happened before you were born. And in that vision, you will correct the faulty foundation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We receive this word. After these things, after this message, the word of the Lord will come to you in a vision. Holy Spirit, thank you because you will open our eyes to see what we have never seen, what we have never heard, what has never happened to us. Thank you, Lord. Now, that wasn't what I wanted to preach from that verse. But I saw something here. After these things, everybody say, after these things, after this message, after the disappointment that I have, after the, 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 the rejection that I have suffered, after the experiences of life that I have suffered, after these things, the word of the Lord will come to me in a vision. Oh, I feel like dancing right now. After the experience at my workplace, after the judgment, the word of the Lord will come to me in a vision. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to have to do a new video on this. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to have this experience, he said the scripture says that what is born of the flesh is of the flesh, but what is born of the Spirit is of the Spirit. You need a life that comes from the Spirit. See, you can't just be seeing what everybody sees. He said what Abraham saw was the fact that he was going childless. What he didn't see at 75, I think it was around about 75 or 70 something. What he didn't see was that he would live up to 170 something. Wow. What do you think would change in your life if you knew you had another 50 years? You will save differently, isn't it? You will eat differently. There are certain things you will do differently. You probably change your career. Are you following me? If you knew you were going to live for another 20 years, another 30 years, or maybe you knew you, you have just one year left, not the one the doctors told you, you will live a different life. But we have read the word of the Lord here today. This is a prophetic word. After these things, the word of the Lord did what? Came to Abraham in a vision. I'm expecting the word of the Lord to come to me and the first step for you to receive the spirit that will help you to see vision is Jesus. To so say these prayers after me, say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Forgive me my sin. Have mercy on me. The Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Show me things that I have never seen before. Let me hear things that I have never heard before. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. I am now born again, and I'm a child of God. Now, if you say that prayer, uh, there's going to be an information on the screen very quickly. Um, um, please, you can just stop the video for the transmission. Um, uh, you, you're going to see the information on the screen. Please do get it.